TNA is a promotion I have made so many videos on. In fact, at one point it was literally like the sole purpose of my channel was that I made TNA informative videos. And the fact is, I've still barely scratched the surface on some of the madness that went down in that company. Because there is a lot that happened in good old TNA. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at and discussing just a few of the most infamous TNA moments and controversies. This is the TNA incident. Before we get into it, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll give you until the three count. And let's get into the video. Austin Aries is a wrestler who has never really had the best reputation due to his conduct and issues he's had backstage and with attitude. He's wrestled for TNA, Ring of Honor, WWE and numerous indie promotions such as MLW and even Control Your Narrative. He was signed to WWE in 2015 but only lasted two years due to his, you guessed it, backstage issues and attitude problems. But while his WWE career didn't go as planned, Austin Aries was a top dog in TNA. He debuted for TNA in 2005 and at the time he was going under the name of Austin Starr but he was fired only two years later in 2007 for, you guessed it, backstage issues and attitude problems. He went to Ring of Honor again where he became a big star in the company though. He won the world title multiple times and had just a great run in TNA, so much so that he got the attention back from TNA who wanted him back and he would return in 2011 back under the name of Austin Aries. And yeah, no matter what you think of Austin Aries as a person or his beliefs or whatever, He's an all-timer TNA wrestler, no question. One of the best TNA wrestlers ever, easily. He's a multiple-time X Division champion, one of the all-time great X Division wrestlers. He was the one who introduced the Option C rule and cashed in his X Division title to win the world title. Add some tag title reigns and many five-star matches, and yeah, what a run Austin Aries had in TNA. But despite being top dog in TNA and being a star in the company, it seemed as though he couldn't stay away from trouble and his attitude led to issues. And one such issue took place between himself and Christy Hemi. Him and Bobby Roode, aka the Dirty Heels, were making their entrance, but Christy Hemi accidentally announced them as Kaz and Daniels botching the announcement. Aerie stormed their head into the ring, cornered her, made her re-announce them, and then got on the middle rope to taunt, while she was still in the corner. At first, looked kind of like a heel move, but also it was kind of weird because you could tell that Christy was uncomfortable, but once again, you couldn't really tell if it was all in character or kayfabe or whatever. But Hemi would take to social media to say that she felt uncomfortable from the incident and what had happened. Austin Aries received a lot of backlash for doing this as it wasn't planned, he was fined by TNA and he privately apologised to Christy Hemi, which is an apology that Hemi was satisfied with. Aries spoke on the incident years later in an interview with Chris Van Vliet. You know, I got to the back and, and no one said anything, went through the rest of the, the taping, uh, no one made any mention of it, that there was any issue. Um, I got home and then the next day I got a call from the office saying I was going to be fined five grand for the incident with Christy. And uh, I was like, whoa, like, what, what incident with Christy? And like, well, the thing was like, whoa, I, I didn't even know that was an issue. Like, why didn't somebody, why didn't anybody say anything to me? You know, like, I was there the whole fucking day and no one came up and said what. I was like, yo, uh, and it was Al Snow. Uh, it, it was, uh, and I just said, hey, Al, let me call Christy and like talk to her. I certainly wasn't trying to offend her or whatever. Do you feel this way? And you start thinking about it, you know, whatever. Like, I get it. She explained her part. I explained mine. I, I told her I didn't have any issue with her professionally wasn't anything to do and, and it was cool and we ended the conversation in good terms. The January 4th 2010 edition of TNA Impact is one of the most infamous episodes in TNA Impact history. So much went down on this absolute roller coaster of an episode. It was firstly notable for the fact that Hulk Hogan was going to be debuting on the show as this was the first TNA Impact under Hulk Hogan who was now a part of TNA. And they held it on a Monday. It was a special three hour Monday episode of TNA Impact going head to head with Monday Night Raw. It was an early, early test for the eventual second Monday Night War between WWE and TNA, which obviously went horribly wrong for TNA. And so much went down in this episode, where there was Homicide getting stuck in the cage, Jeff Hardy's return, The Band, Val Venus, and of course, 
the Nasty Boys debuting in TNA. That's right, the Nasty Boys in 2010 were signed to a major wrestling company. You're probably thinking, why the hell would you want the Nasty Boys in 2010? And I was going to come up with something to reply here, but I actually just can't tell you why. Like, there isn't actually any reason to have the Nasty Boys signed in 2010. It was seen as a dumb move then, and it's still seen as a dumb move now, and it was a really early warning sign of what was to come with the Hogan era of TNA. It was a jarring run, to say the least. They were on TV every week just being annoying and they just shouldn't have been there. They apparently instantly got heat backstage for burying Jay Lethal and his Black Machismo gimmick. They had four matches in the company. They won three of them and lost one of them. One of them being a tables match to Team 3D was the one they lost. So they kind of had to lose that because it's a tables match. They even teamed with Jimmy Hart in a six-man tag against the whole Team 3D, including Brother Runt. Like, what is that all about? On March 29, 2010, the Nasty Boys were released by TNA. It was kind of out of nowhere. It was only two and a half months since they had been signed. They hadn't even lasted three months. And they were on TV damn near every week. But apparently, there was an incident at a TNA function where Spike executives were present. And Dixie Carter had to step in and fire the Nasty Boys. Apparently, there were Spike executives there and they were just drunk. But there's no real other details other than that. And I really would love to know what went down at this function to make them get fired by TNA. But nonetheless, I ain't complaining. They were gone. Rare Hulk Hogan era TNAW. In my last video, you might have heard me say this. Hopefully my wrestling promotion is nothing like 5 Star Wrestling. Oh yeah, um, announcement coming soon. Subscribe to Wrestle Club, links down below. The final thing to talk about is TNA's treatment of Jesse Sorensen. In 2011, Jesse Sorensen was signed to TNA. He was a relatively unknown wrestler, but TNA seemingly saw something in him. He began wrestling in the X Division, wrestling the likes of Jack Evans, Austin Aries, Kid Cash, Zima Ion, and others, as well as having numerous X Division title matches, but never winning the title, all of this going on throughout 2011. However, in February 2012, at Against All Odds, in a match with Zima Ion, his TNA career would begin to come crashing down. Jesse was unable to continue the match due to injury. Jesse had legitimately suffered a C1 vertebrae fracture with spinal cord edema. I don't know how to pronounce that, by the way. Sorry. Serious injuries that could end careers, and he was out for the foreseeable futures. But here's how TNA come into it. According to Sorensen himself, Dixie Carter promised that TNA would pay his medical bills and also told him that he'll always have a job in TNA after he recovers from injury. But here's the messed up part, um, TNA did not pay his medical bills, which caused him and Dixie to have a fallout and caused Jesse to threaten to sue them. However, later that year, he would take a production job in TNA, which Jesse has said he regrets and puts down to being young and stupid, and I guess this was Dixie's way of keeping her promise that he'd always have a job. However, he wouldn't have a job, as in July 2013, he was released and never wrestled in TNA once after getting injured, and by the time he was released, the time that he could sue them was pretty much up and there was no way he could have done anything. But I am happy to say that he did return to the ring and he is wrestling to this day, including on AEW Dark. But Dixie, TNA, that's pretty messed up.